I've built tons of SaaS applications in my life and some of them worked out and some of them didn't. And that's just part of, you know, the development process. But over the past years, I've learned a couple of things. Many developers reinvent the wheel. You know, we really shouldn't be setting up authentication and we really shouldn't be setting up Stripe, emails and all of that boring stuff. Our job as developers is to solve problems. That's why I created Fire Snippets to solve my and your problem of, you know, reinventing the wheel. So Fire Snippets is simply an API where you can copy a little code snippet that you can just paste into your development environment so that it can do the little functionalities that we usually waste time on when we're developing applications as developers. So let me show you. Right, so right now we're actually in our Fire Snippets dashboard and um, this dashboard is actually connected to my Firebase account. So this is my account, my Firebase account, right? And um, when you create a workspace, it'll actually walk you through how to connect to your Firebase account. And the first thing we're gonna have to do is to just go to Stripe because we want to set up our Stripe account. And then you're just gonna go to the default test mode. You can actually go to live mode too, but I'm just gonna test it out for now. So test mode, and then I'll click on create Stripe account. So right now it's just loading the Stripe details and whatnot. And then you can just click on add account information. And then it will redirect us to the Stripe onboarding. Right, so I'm just gonna click on my default email address. That's my email because it will probably take a long time and you're a developer, you know how to do it. Okay, so once you're finished with the walkthrough, you go back to this page and then you can say uh, back to Stripe page. So here you can see that Fire Stripe has been connected and just like that, you've connected to Stripe and you're good to go. Okay, so the next thing you're going to have to do is to just make sure that you have set up your ZeptoMail Right, and then your API key for ZeptoMail is all set up. So uh, I'm just gonna blur this out so that you can see this. So this is just my API key for ZeptoMail. And then um, you're just going to go to API key. And you're just going to have to make sure that you know you have your, a valid API key here, right? So let's just go here and check out Stripe. So Stripe, I'm just gonna show you that the account that I just created is done. So this is the account that I just created. It's Fire Snippets, right? And then we're just going to go to Transactions and Product. And we're just going to create a product here in a moment. Okay, so here, what you're going to have to do is just to click on Boilerplates, right? And then you're just going to choose the template that you want to, to, to use here. So you can actually preview them. So all of these templates are actually yours and you can use them for as many, many projects as you want. So this one has a light and dark to go and it has authentication. It has a login page, it has a sign up page. If you go back here, it has, um, it has the payment, pay, payment forms. It has some terms and conditions. So it's just a, just a, basic template for a micro SaaS. So I'm just gonna choose that. I'm just gonna choose this one, use template. And then I'm just gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it fire test. And then I'll generate the snippets. Right, so here it will just give you the, the little ENV file that you have to use in your, in your project. So here I'm just gonna click download template and then it'll be downloaded just like that. And then I'll go to the files here and then I'll unzip it. I think I just have to double tap this to unzip it. And then there we go, Fire Togo 2. So I'm just gonna rename this to something like Fire Togo Test. So here I'm just going to go to VS Code and then I will open a folder. Um, it's probably in downloads, Fire Togo Test 2, and then we'll open that up. So here you can actually see that Fire Snippets gives you some instructions on how to use everything. So the first um, instruction is that you have to run npm install to install all the dependencies. So I'm gonna type in npm install, right? And then we just wait for that to run and then 
the next one is npm run dev so that we can run the deployment server. So let's just wait for this to load. And then as that loads, I'm just going to open up my ENV here. And then I'm just going to copy everything that's here. And then I'm going to paste it there, just like that, just like that. And then, so you know, you see these things, there's some snippets, I, there's some snippet IDs that we created to sort of view these snippets and to actually, you know, configure them as to what you want. You can actually go to snippets and then you see these auto generated snippets for fire test, fire test, fire test. So this is the sign up snippet. This is the login snippet. And then this is the, um, this is the payment snippet. So as for now, I'm just going to make sure that the sign up snippet is okay. So I'm just going to click edit. So here the type is auth sign up. So it's going to put it into our users connect collection called fire snippets users um, after the account is created. And then this is the little code that you can copy, but it's already in the boilerplate. So it's all good. We don't have to copy that. And then um, field mapping. So it will just ask for your email element ID, password, and then the button. So that's already set. So you don't have to do that. I'll just show you our payment snippet. So here, when you click edit, you see that there is this example.com success URL. So you have to change that in terms of what you want to to, to, to redirect to after the payment and you just have to paste your price ID here, right? And then um, field mappings, this is all good. You just have to put in your button element ID so that you know when, which, which button is clicked for this snippet to be run. So yeah, we're good to go. So I pasted in my snippets here and then all we have to do now is to run the deployment server. So npm run dev, just like that. And then I just have to open this up. Okay, so now we're back at our page that's running on the local local host. And um, everything is actually now fully functional. So if you just go to sign up, my name, Nashe is Sydney. Um, Sydney match one, the password, let me in. And then we can create the account. Then boom, you're done. So here, if we go to our code, um, let's open up our sign up, right? So here, user signed up. This is when um, the user is signed up. So here you can just, um, I don't know, route them to to some other page, so location.herf or router.push or whatever you want to use, and then you can push them to the next page when they sign up. So here, if we actually check our Firestore, we can, if we reload this, we can actually see that they are, they're not, they are now a user. And if we go to our Firestore database, we will see that fast snippets users and then with their email and their name here. So that is pretty cool because of, uh, you know, the configurations that we put here. Yeah. So that's it about the, the you know, the, the, the signing up. And then for login, login is as simple too. So let me just put my email address here and then my password and then login. Boom, you're done. So that's it. So you now have a fully functional website with authentication on it. And then we're going to go ahead and set up and set up our payments. So this will literally take it will literally take two minutes. So here we're going to go ahead and add a product. So test product. And then we just, this will be a one off, once off. And then I'll just put it to, what's the price here? 19. I'm just going to put 19 here, 19 bucks. And then we add the product. I'm going to open up the product and I'm going to open up the price. I'm going to copy this price ID. I'll go back to fire snippets. And then I will open up my one-time payment. I'll click edit. And then I will simply paste it there. And then I'll save my changes. 
right and then let's say let's say i want to redirect to the fire snippets website firesnippets.com after after a successful payment right so now i'm just going to go to field mappings so field mappings looks good the post payment okay so post payment what this does is that after the payment what will happen so first i want to create an account and i want to put the user to fire snippets users and then the display name i want to put it i want to let's change it from fire snippets to fire fire test and then the sender email i'll use my email it, because this, this uses zepto mail so you make sure that you're using your own domain if you say fire snippets here it probably won't work but i'm connected to fire snippets as in my zepto email is connected to fire snippets so it'll work um so the action two is i want to update a document which document the collection is fire snippets users and then the document name is fs stripe uid so fs stripe uid is a special variable so we also have variables in fire snippets so this one is a special variable that just refers to this user who was just created before so this is all generated for you so you don't have to worry about it so which fields do i want to update i want to update email and then i'll put in the email so you can actually put in the payment amount in fact let's let's add another field here um payment amount and then i'll put in the payment amount here right and then the test field i'll just leave it like that this is a test field and then i will save this okay so this is saved and then yeah our payments must work now so let me just reload this page let me reload it and then we can click the button and we'll be good to go. So let me just show you the code for this. Um, it's in pricing and then um, under here. So I'm just setting the ID. ID if starter, if, if the plan name is starter, then I'm setting the ID to submit button. You remember the submit button that's in Fire Snippets, right? So that's the one. And then you can just click this button. So let's click this button, starter and then get started loading the payment and then boom shakalaka let's go okay so email um i'm just gonna use another email here let me use i think i have this yeah and then so this will create an account after the user the user um, makes the payment so let me just double check that this email is not already authenticated if it is, I'll just delete it. Yeah, it's there. So I'll just delete it so that, um, you know, it'll be able to add the user. Okay. So here the month, uh, I'm just, this, this is a test is test mode. So uh, there are some default, you know, values for the payment and I'm just going to put them here. One, two, three, um, Sydney, and then I'll use the zip code and then I'll just press play pay i mean and then boom just like that you know we are redirected to the fire snippets um, website as we configured in the dashboard and then um if we go back to um, fire snippets we will see that here a new user was created los ox los ox where is he this one right and he hasn't signed in yet so if i go to my emails and then I go to La Socks. I hope I'm logged into La Socks here. Yeah, there we go. I am logged in. I will actually see that an email was sent to me requesting that I change my password and it will actually show me the password. So here you can see that this is my password and I can also change it. So let's just use this one copy and then if i go back um let's go back to localhost here to like the website that we created the account on come on load 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 right and then we press login and then if we type in lasox corp and then just type in the dumb password so you know it will obviously not work and then if i type in the password that i received and then try again you see boom shakalaka we will have logged in and if your user actually wants to change their password they can change it here too 
and then if we go back here and then press on transactions we'll actually see that um, you know we now have a new transaction here and then if we also come back here and then view our logs we can actually see that you know a payment link was created and an account creation was made so if an error happened during the processing you can actually check your logs and see what went wrong and then you can just quickly fix that up as you can see guys this tool is super cool and it can really come in handy when you just want to ship SaaS businesses real fast and I actually use this too when I'm creating my own SaaS application. So another tip, I think when you are making SaaS applications, you should, you should think about the problems that you are facing and try to fix those problems first. And maybe other people can actually find those problems handy too. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. And um, please like the video and subscribe. And I will see you on some other videos.